Remington. Cameron. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, absolutely. Today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Excited to be here. How uh, How has the show been? We're at Prosper right now for, for context. We're, we're at, at Prosper. Live, live at Prosper we're show. We're at Prosper. This is the first show the, for cart.com. For cart.com, this is the first time at Prosper and our first uh, our first trade show, cart.com, was actually uh, born during the pandemic. Uh, and so as a company, this is our first trade show. And it's just great to be here, see people, uh, frankly, without masks and yeah, uh, sure, uh, sure. you know, just mingling and, and interacting. I've collected a number of business cards today, <laughs> okay. which I am super excited about. I have to tell you, I thought the business card uh, might be extinct or endangered at least, but uh, right they now. are they are here in force, and I'm I'm happy I to love happy, happy to report. So what's what's the goal for you being here? Because you know, as I'm talking with people who are here at Prosper, it's to network, it's to connect, it's honestly a lot of people are here just to get a pulse on where totally. e-commerce is at right yes. now. So for Prosper 2021, what does that mean for you yeah. to be here? Well, for us, you know, cart.com, our goal is to provide end-to-end -end e commerce solutions for direct to consumer brands, right? Yep. And what we found is that there's a lot of Amazon sellers and Amazon aggregators that are interested in doing more direct to consumer. But look, it's tough, right? Mm -hmm. It's not as easy as Amazon. Amazon makes a lot of things easy. It's their technology. They bring in all the customers. They do fulfillment if you're doing FBA, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. in one place, super simple, one dashboard, one login. Uh, and on D2C, you have to use 10, 12 different vendors, multiple 3PLs, multiple marketing agencies. Uh, and so cart.com has brought all of those capabilities from our own storefront platform to our own fulfillment network, to our own marketing services, D2C focused marketing services agency, uh, all in house so that you can have uh, all of the solutions, whether they're software or services uh, that you need to do direct to, e uh, direct -to consumer e-commerce. Sure. And so for us, this show you know, is really about testing the waters and learning about what the needs and pain points of Amazon sellers are mm -hmm. so that we can offer them uh, options on the D2C side to help diversify and increase their revenue, mm -hmm. right? I mean, this is a great place to learn about individuals or, I mean, rarely do you get an opportunity to talk with this many e-commerce sellers in one place Absolutely. at one time. So the, the point of this conversation largely is to, of course, talk about what cart.com is doing and how you're innovating in the space. But also, I, I was really interested in pulling out the vision that you have for kind of that one centralized spot yes. that people can go to, to do all things e-commerce. Yep. So I guess if you could, well, yeah. if that is the vision, or if that is the vision. It's that absolutely building, the vision, yes. Okay. So what is, you talked about problems, the problems of e-commerce yep. e sellers. What is the core problem here? Is it fragmentation? Yeah, I mean, yes. what, what's... yeah absolutely. Okay. It's, it's, so it's, it's two things mainly. Um, it, it is fragmentation in that really cart.com is uh, a centralizing force. Uh, think of us as an aggregator of e-commerce capabilities, mm. right? You know, we have Amazon aggregators, many of uh, whom are at this show. They are aggregating brands. We are aggregating D2C capabilities so that we can uh, dis defragment and uh, reintegrate bring all these solutions together in one place. And the fragmentation piece is, is really interesting because its effects uh, are multifaceted, which, you know, think about it. If you have 20 different vendors, now you have to hire a whole team just to do vendor management, right? The other problem with having so many vendors is each of these vendors that you have takes additional, additional margin, additional margin, right? Because like they need to make their margin, they have their premium, they have their markup, right? And so you're paying for, you know, that guy's overhead, you're paying for this vendor's overhead, you're paying for that vendor's overhead. So you don't get any economies of scale, right? Mm. You, don't, you don't get any economic benefit by having all of these disparate vendors, right? Sure. And they don't talk to each other, right? right? Their people don't talk to each other, the data doesn't talk to each other, they don't transfer information or data back and forth. And so that's on you. So now it's like, yeah, hey, yeah. like we're running a promo in California. And so I need to tell my marketing agency that, you know, we need to shift ad spend to California. But then I also need to call my 3PL, right? Because my 3PL needs to know, hey, we need to shift inventory over there because we're going to have more orders on the, on the West Coast, right? But you have to do all that. With cart.com, you don't have to do all that. Our guys are sitting next to each other, right? They have their, you know, their phone numbers, you get on Slack, and we're always communicating saying, hey, we're doing this in marketing, we're doing this on fulfillment, or we're doing this on the tech front, right? And so yep. we can coordinate all that. And then, you know, the data passes seamlessly from each of those, each of those functions to the other, right? So you're defining the problem very well and the solutions. You're defining the solutions as well. Pulling out the vision of yeah. what what an active, an active yes. centralized vision yes. looks yeah. like for this. And and Cameron, we call this e-commerce 2.0. Right. Is, okay. Is let's what define we call, that. I'm what so we curious. call this vision. And I think what a lot of people don't realize is, yes, you get an advantage by having your marketing in the same place as your fulfillment, for example. Right. There's obvious advantages you can get. Sure. But what's really interesting to me is that 
once you have all these things together, you can actually create emergent value that's greater than the sum of, it, uh, of the parts, right? And so there's net new value that actually emerges that is created that you would not have been able to have before. What does right? it look like? And so, right. And so specifically some examples of, of what that could be. And, you know, it could be many things for different brands, obviously. And it's going to change based sure. on like what you're selling and where you're selling, who you're selling to. But the ability to say to have, you know, your marketing team, right, that's running, whether it's ad campaigns, you know, let's say a digital ad campaign, right, be able to in real time also direct the flow of goods of your product across a fulfillment network to make sure that we can, you know, very quickly, almost in real time, right? Like ship product out over here because, you know, we're geo-targeting a specific zip code or uh, zip yeah, code yeah. in a state right here. And we know we have enough inventory over there to keep shipping times and prices really low, mm. right? And having that kind of coordination is not something you can do or uh, you're able to do uh, without this type of integration, yeah. right? Uh, and at, at scale, that all could be automated, mm. right? E-commerce 2.0, by having all these things in one place, enables greater opportunity for automation, mm -hmm. right? Because you own all the data in one place, it's sitting there, right? All of these different tools are integrated, all the, all the people and processes are integrated. Right. Uh, and so once you have that, you can start finding ways to automate uh, and get even greater efficiency as your your integrating capabilities. So we, I'm, I want to make sure and paint the picture because this is a, I mean, this is a complex issue, and it's also it's a, uh, I mean, kind of a groundbreaking new development work that you're working towards, like centralizing yeah. everything well, in one and, place. And, and you know, think about this: there are companies that have these integrated end-to-end -end e commerce software and service stacks, right? Sure. Like they, they exist. They're called Home Depot and Target and Walmart, right? But they don't offer them to brands, entrepreneurs, merchants as a service, right. they use them for themselves, mm. right? And so part of what we're also trying to do is democratize that type of, of capability integration. How, so how are, digging into kind of the, the, the how, how are you able to get so many platforms to play nice with each other? Yes. Yeah, for lack a, of a better right, sure, way absolutely. of saying it. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, and, and, and our strategy has been both uh, a buy and build strategy. So we've actually made a number of acquisitions of very specific types of software and very specific types of service providers, and then uh, have integrated on top of uh, the technology and teams that we've acquired, right? Yeah. So that's okay. what's allowed us to kind of get a jump start here and be able to do this. And so the, the cart.com kind of core competency is actually integration. Right, it's the integration of people, process, and technology that is ultimately allowing us to do uh, what it is that we're doing. Okay, okay, interesting. So, what are you actively building towards? What is when someone comes to the platform, right? Yeah. So, are they able to? What, what does the connection spread look like right now? Like, you plug in, is it one plug in and instantly spread out to X number of different things that you can pull into the same process? Like, what what does that process look like? Yeah, so so interesting question because you know if you think of of a lot of the 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 prevailing direct-to-consumer e-commerce model is built on the plug-in approach, right? Yes. Where I have a platform or a centralized platform and I'm plugging in all these different tools into it, right? But again, the problem is you create a single point of failure. Everything's going through the mm. same, this, a single platform. None of your plugins talk to each other. They all have to go through the platform, yeah. right? And so some of them don't play nicely with each other, right? They break all the time. You have to pay for all of them. You have to call 10 different people to like service all of them and update and maintain all of them, right? And so our model is less about plugins. We were actively actually trying to avoid having too many plugins, right? We want as much in the core platform as possible precisely so that we can pay off that promise of integration. So that involves fulfillment? That does involve fulfillment, okay. absolutely. So, so what does that look like then? Uh, well, you know, fulfillment, as you know, Cameron, is, is complex, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's complex, it's labor intensive, and even FBA, even Amazon uh, FBA centers have a tremendous number of people working in those in those fulfillment centers, right? It's not all robots. They have robots, and yeah, yeah, you know, they have sure. parts of, of uh, their fulfillment centers that are extremely automated, but there's an awful lot of people in there. Fulfillment's very labor intensive, uh, and there's not a lot of margin for error. Right, both economically, but also you know, just in terms of you know, meeting customer expectations for timelines, delivery, etc. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we've built a warehouse, a fulfillment center network of nine fulfillment centers, strategically located around the country. Okay. Uh, so that we can lower time in transit, we can support um, you know, uh, Prime uh, timelines as well, and and uh, are supporting uh, some seller fulfilled Prime uh, customers. Um, and 
the reason we have this network of warehouses, a lot of 3PLs only have one or two warehouses, right? But the reason we have this network of warehouses is so that we can push inventory strategically into different parts of the country, sure. right? To obviously lower costs and time and transit, but also uh, to allow us to say, hey, like, again, like I said, like we're gonna, you know, run an ad campaign in the in the Northeast. So like, let's flex, let's flex product uh, or inventory of the Northeast sure. for this customer, right? So it gives us that kind of flexibility. You, you were talking about democracy. You said you used the word democratize. Mm -hmm. I think that's a powerful word because it, it signals that you're really trying to empower a lot of people yes. to, to take control Absolutely. of this, right? So what does e-commerce and e-commerce 2.0 kind of combined with that concept of democratization, what does the future of the e-commerce world look like when all of a sudden everyone has this democratized uh, cart.com ability concept of centralization? I think it, yeah, I think what it looks like is is uh, brands now have control over their own digital destiny, right? They don't have to rely solely on Amazon, and Amazon's great. Everybody should be selling on Amazon. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic channel. Uh, but ultimately, diversity is important and balance is important, right? Sure. Uh, and I think e-commerce 2.0 is about putting power back in the hands of brands, right? So that they can say, "Hey, I don't need to drop ship." Right and, dr and drop shipping, you know, just destroys your margin, right? Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't need a drop ship because I have a fulfillment partner that can actually do things affordably, quickly, just like FBA, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it allows them to say, hey, I want to control my own storefront environment and make it look however I want to, right? Our storefront platform, for example, uh, yes, there's a there's a templatized and uh, thematic, uh, I, there's themed options, right? But yeah. also. Uh, it's heavily customizable and flexible. So like you can make it do and look like anything you want, right? Mm -hmm. Because we believe in giving brands the ability to kind of create their own, express their own, you know, their own brand and tell their own story however they want, right? And so part of what we're trying to do with this push towards e-commerce 2.0 is with all of this consolidation or integration of these capabilities is then give that to the brands, to brands that are out there and give them the power to say, hey, yeah, like I actually can do everything on D2C the way I want to do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm curious. I was actually talking with, uh, I had an interview today where we were talking about multi-channel. Yes. And the effects of multi-channel. I'm curious to ask you about the concept of cannibalization, mm -hmm. over cannibalization. Yes. Whether across channels. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, do you see that as a, a factor for brands? Do you think, how significant is we, that? We've seen the opposite. Interesting. Honestly, we have seen the opposite. Uh, our marketing team is working with a variety of, of Fortune 100 retail brands that are on Amazon, that have strong D2C presences, and have brick and mortar. And what we have found is, um, what's the what's the, uh, the the adage, a rising tide lifts all boats? Oh, yeah, right? Okay, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. And, and that's how we see it, right? The rising tide lifts all boats. And if you have these multiple channels, consumers at the end of the day don't really see channels. They want to buy the products and brands they want to buy when and how they want to buy them sure. in the way that is most convenient to them. If I'm online and I see something I want, I'll buy it online. If I'm walking past it in the mall and I see it, I'll hop in the store and buy it, right? People just want to be able to purchase how they want to be able to purchase. Yeah, so yeah. why not enable them to purchase across every channel, right? And then back that up with marketing that is uh, omni with omni-channel intent, right? So, hey, you know, it's not just about digital ads driving revenue for you know, direct to consumer, you know, digital sales. Yeah. That same ad can raise awareness so the next time they're walking by the store or next time they're cruising Amazon, they recognize the brand or the product and they buy it there, right? So we have seen the opposite. Our data actually shows that, you know, the rising tide does lift all boats and you, you should be doing all these channels because they are mutually reinforcing, not uh, competitive. That is, that's very interesting. Cause I, you know, without seeing data, I could see it going both ways, yes. right? Like I see the advantage of having your product on as many marketplaces as possible. I also could see how potentially there could be some cannibalization. That's really interesting to hear that there isn't, or that but, the data points. But it, well, see, in cannibal, look, there's always gonna be cannibalization, yeah, right? Of course, right? yeah. The, the course, question is, the question is, are you able to drive more revenue across multiple channels than the cannibalization costs you? And we think the answer is yes. Interesting. So, okay, you're actively building. Yep towards this future or this present yes, of yeah. centralized, right, it's happening now. What is the next What is the next step for cart.com? Yeah, I mean, for us, it's really about, and one of the reasons we're at the show, it's um, finding partners, um, other companies, vendors, uh, that can help us round out our offering, yeah. right? And again, you know, we are uh, looking to make additional acquisitions of, of various software and service capabilities. 
Uh, and so continuing to both buy and build on top of the integrated solution set that we have is, yeah. is very important to us. Um, and, uh, you know, ultimately companies out there, brands out there, they can work with us in as deep of a way or as shallow of a way as they want. If they want to come and just use us for fulfillment, that's fine. If they just want to take advantage of our marketing teams, that's fine too. If they just want to use our storefront platform and online ordering systems, that's fine too. I, uh, how can people follow? I mean, obviously it's in the name, right? Cart.com. Cart. Right? Yeah. Right? Check right. out the website. What's uh, it? Cart. <laughs> yeah. How can people uh, find cart.com? Um, so cart.com obviously is, is, the place to go to, to connect, but is there like social media? Like where, where should people go to yeah, track yeah, the vision? Here absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we love LinkedIn. We're very active on LinkedIn. Okay. So, you know, definitely, you know, follow, follow cart.com on LinkedIn. We have offices now in LA, Houston, Austin, uh, other places and, and continuing to grow the team. So amazing. Um, yeah, I know it's, it, it's exciting. And we definitely think that, uh, you know, the future is multi-channel Yes. and, uh, you know, on the D 2 C side, we want to, you know, work with, Amazon sellers, Amazon aggregators that are at this show, right? Yep. Um, and you know, help them help them round out their own their own revenue uh, portfolio and, and kind of uh, diversify the revenue streams. And you know, that's ultimately our goal. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's been a great show thus far. Amazing. I'm looking forward to another day of it. Amazing. I I really love the concept of centralization in terms of democ when you mix the idea of centralized democratized yes or you're empowering everyone to to make the most of this one central place to go you to. know that's interesting because the, the term centralization often in some context negative like, connotation yeah, like the, the connotation is antithetical to, to democratization right right you think oh like they're they're you know actually consolidating it so they can uh, achieve more control over it right which is not our intent we're consolidating it so that it is easier for merchants to own their own customer own their own data right uh, which is hard ownership. to do with, with fragmentation yes yeah. it's ownership that's that's really the sense that i get of course, i mean that's what you're working to empower others to do is claim ownership exactly. over their brands over Precisely. their products thank you so much for coming on the show thanks for having I, me Kevin. i really this, appreciate it's been it a blast i love the vision i love thank where you. you're going so i'm looking forward to watching cart.com grow fantastic thanks so much thank you nice